My wife and I have been running the rat race for years, with a family, a house in the city, two dogs and a cat. The stereotypical American dream. But the city took its toll. The neighborhood got worse, the crime rose, and we found ourselves looking for a way out. Our opportunity came when I was offered a new job out of state. It was a great career move, but we didn't want to move to a new city just to have the same problems again. So we started looking around and found a great mountain community about an hour and a half from the job, and a great ranch-style house with a big back porch, windows everywhere, and a lot of property. The backyard has a big grassy area and a creek that cuts the property in half, then acres of woods beyond. It's huge. The house is more than twice the size of our house in the city and has no neighbors within a mile. It's a radical change from the life we lived. But best of all, it was less than half of what we were paying for our old house. The house was a foreclosure. The old family had abandoned the property. We didn't really think anything of it. The first three months were uneventful. With us settling into our new life, the kids getting used to the new school and new friends, and most of all, us getting used to the big house and property. But then the weather turned cold, and things started to get weird. It started with noises from the back property. We figured that just comes with living in the woods. Then the motion lights around the house started going off randomly. Once again, we just chalked it up to being in the woods. But last night, it all changed. Last night was the most terrifying night of my life. One of the dogs was at the back door whining and scratching. I assumed he needed to go to the bathroom, so I grabbed my flashlight and walked out the back door. Instantly, something felt off. The dog bolted, growling and snarling. It was a cold night, about 30 degrees, but the dog ran straight through the creek, running off into the woods in the back of the property. Flashlight bouncing, I ran after him, calling his name. I got to the creek and made my way across, trying desperately to follow him. I could hear him still growling and barking somewhere up ahead, and I pushed further away from the safety of the house and deeper into the woods. That's when I heard it, a shriek like I've never heard before in my life. It was a mix of a moaning wail and metal on metal. It echoed through the trees and froze me in my tracks. My dog bounded its way back to me and cowered down behind me. I turned around and could just make out the warm glow of the house. I swung my flashlight around, looking for the source of the noise, and that's when I heard something even more terrifying. Out of the cold silence, my wife's voice floated all around me. Babe. I whipped back around and could just barely make out the image of my wife, safely inside our house. Babe, I'm right here. The voice said from deeper in the woods, then came another voice, just as clear as the first. Come out here. It was my dad's voice. I swung the flashlight around again, and this time caught the briefest glint of light bouncing off of eyes. The creature was in the beam for barely a second, but it was tall, maybe six feet, and ashen white. It had long spindly fingers that grabbed the trunk of a pine tree, and then it was gone. I turned back and ran towards the house. I ran headlong into the icy creek and stumbled. My dog ran past me, making it back to the yard and up onto the porch. I dug my hands into the freezing muddy bank and pulled myself out, not stopping to look back. I scrambled into the house. My wife ran over to me, asking what had happened. I just shook my head. I'm not really certain myself. I had a growing sense of dread tonight as the sun began to fall. We kept the dogs inside, and I haven't dared to look out the back. But as I sit here typing, my motion lights in the backyard keep going on. I grew up in the forest, in a tiny house in the Appalachian Mountains. Our house was more like a shack, and behind it was a large looming mountain. The nearest neighbors weren't far, but with woods in between, it sure seemed like it. My parents were in a rock band and left once or twice a week from about 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. for practice or a show. I was about 12. My sister was 6 or 7. We passed the time by watching old VHS tapes or talking. One night my parents left and a torrential downpour started. If you know Tennessee, you know that a flood can happen anytime. 
We had a small closed-in porch in which our mom's favorite dog, Whiskers, was tied via a 20-foot chain wrapped around a toolbox. We were poor, okay? Anyways, this dog was goofy and about as useless as a guard toad, but he had a loud bark, and my parents' hope was that he would frighten intruders. He was quietly sleeping on the closed-in porch until the wind, which at that time was at a complete roar, ripped the door off its hinges. Whiskers bolted off into the night. I yelled at my sister that I was going to get him, put on my dad's rubber mining boots, and ran out. I didn't get a flashlight because, I don't know, I was a dumb kid. I was terrified, both for his safety in the rain, and the fact that if my parents found out their dog was missing, I would have had the shit beaten out of me. Lightning lit up the side of the yard, just enough for me to see him bolting down the bank and across the stream toward the mountain. So I ran after him. The creek had a bridge, aka a very thin wooden plank. I didn't even touch it. I leapt over it, my adrenaline sky high. Now the lightning was gone, and I could only hear whiskers based on the dragging sound his chain made. I was already dripping with rain, not a dry spot on my entire body, so I ran up into the forest. I lost the sound of whiskers, so I just kind of scaled the slippery leaves, and as I ran I called out and made kissy noises, as you do for a dog when you're 12. Then it seemed like a shadow fell. I don't know how else to describe it. I couldn't see anything, but the black suddenly got blacker. And then I realized something. I could smell extra well, thanks to the rain. It really makes things pungent. I smelled dead leaves and wet dog. I actually got hopeful at that point, because I knew he would be out trotting around marking his territory, and maybe I could find him. But the extra black seemed ominous, and I stopped calling. I felt anxious, like something else was in the forest. I stopped dead to listen. I couldn't hear anything, but from above me, the crest of the mountain, I smelled something. It smelled putrid, rotten, like a carcass that's been sitting in southern Tennessee heat all day. I remember almost gagging, and my anxiety turned into true, actual fear. I knew how bears smelled, and how most animals smelled, actually. This was not something organic, in an alive sense. I still couldn't hear any footsteps, but I got the sense that something was moving toward me. My body was not wanting to stay still at that point, but I was frozen in terror, staring into nothing, smelling rot, and feeling like I was being stalked. I've been stalked by a mountain lion before, and it felt almost exactly the same, except with an extra dose of piss your pants fear. And then lightning flashed again, and I saw something impossible. The trees were lit up around me, but several feet in front of me there was a huge black void. It was pure pitch black. In my peripherals I could see really far around me, but in front it was like someone had sharpied the entire forest out. Right then I heard a dog barking and Whiskers sort of appeared out of nowhere from my right, barking insanely and heading toward that dark spot. Thanks to the lightning bolt, my only thought was, now it saw us. Somehow, I had the sense to dive down and pick up Whiskers' long chain before he got too far, and I had to yank him away. Keep in mind, it's still raining as loud as all holy fuck, so loud that I'm sure nobody else heard him barking but me, and I was right next to him. And then I heard this guttural noise from the top of the mountain. It was like a growl, but more like a rumble. Almost an earthquake sound. It was deep, and all my wet hair stood completely on end. I remember taking off, and I thought I'd have to drag this damn dog down the hill. But I think he agreed with my decision. I have no clue to this day how we got through all that forest without slamming into a tree. Black vision downhill at a 70 degree angle, and slippery leaves. We were like superheroes there for a second. Superheroes who would have probably pissed our pants if we'd looked behind us. It's also incredible that in my dad's big clunky boots, I was able to keep pace with a running dog, but that's how frightened we were. There was nothing but animal instinct. We crossed the bridge, and I ran across it this time. We get back to the house, I chain the dog up, He's wet and shivering, looking very remorseful for his bad decision. I scrambled to get a hammer and fix the fucked up door the best I could. It was a shack like I said. Our lock was a piece of wood and a nail in the middle. 
I changed into some warm clothes and sat back down, too scared to say much. My sister was tired. It was late. She wanted to put on a movie, but I stopped her because I still felt uneasy. We turned out the lights. Trust me, it's far less frightening this way because if the lights are on and it's pitch black outside, anyone can be watching you. Anyways, we sat in the dark living room and looked out the picture window at the rainy yard. We didn't see anything, but there were flickers and shadows. Something was off. When the lightning appeared, there would be a mass either far or near that just didn't light up right. I took a flashlight and shined it out the window and it just ended. The beam was cut off, swallowed by black spots. Whiskers, usually the type of dog to bark his head off at the mere sight of a butterfly, was dead quiet. However, our roosters all over the property were crowing. I had a superstition book as a younger kid that said if a rooster crowed at night, death was near. As in physically manifested, medieval death, the guy who carried the scythe. I had asked my dad years before this incident what a rooster crowing at night meant. His reply was that it means something is walking through them. If they were crowing and he was awake, he'd go out with his gun and almost always bring back a mink or weasel. So roosters have a pretty good alarm system. And this night, when it was darker than dark and the rain was pouring down in sheets, you could hear them all crowing and crowing constantly. But I said nothing to my sister. She finally fell asleep and I stayed awake, staring out the window until my parents got home, complaining of wet dog smell. They asked what happened. I told them whiskers got loose and I caught them quickly. They saw the door and luckily didn't blame me for that, but the storm. I'm a 29 year old female. This incident occurred during the summer. I have a park that's about a mile away from my house. My dog and I walk to the park and back almost every day. She is a year old mutt, a mix of pit bull, blue tick hound, and German shepherd. She's about 50 pounds. We always go to the water fountain to get a drink before we go home. As we were getting a drink, I felt like someone was watching me. Let me state that I'm a girl that wears earbuds when walking my dog. Yes, I know, it's dumb. I turn around and there's this tall man about 60 years old looking at me. He waves at me and starts talking. He also has a large greyhound standing next to him. I take out my earbuds and he started asking questions like, what's your dog's name? How old is she? Then he starts asking me questions about myself. That's when my red flag went up. He started asking me if I was married, how old I was, and many other personal questions. At this point, my dog starts whining and pulling on her leash. She's a well-behaved dog, so I started to get nervous. The guy saw that my dog was doing this and he said, Can I give your dog a treat? I have some in my pocket. As we were talking, I never saw him give his dog any, so I told him she had a sensitive stomach and that it would not be a good idea. I was not going to allow this man to give my dog a treat. I should also state that this park has a large walking path that goes through the woods. If you walk the full path, it's about two miles. The man then stated that he was about to walk it. He said to me, would you like to take a walk in the woods? The hair on the back of my neck stood up. I told him no thank you and that I was just leaving. We said our goodbyes and I watched him walk down the path into the woods with his dog. As soon as he was out of my eyesight, I ran as fast as I could with my dog out of the park. Once I hit the entrance, I started to walk down the hill. The hill leads to a road that goes through a little community that I walked to get home. Again, I had that feeling that someone was watching me. I turned around and the creepy guy from the park was behind me in his car. I stood there frozen in fear because I knew he could not have walked that entire path in four minutes. He drove by me with a sinister smile, waving. As he drove by, I looked in his car and I saw that he had no dog in it. He rolled his window down and said, I hope I see you again, and drove off. With Zoe at my side, I immediately ran home as fast as I could. So creepy dog walker guy, let's not meet. I'm from a small town in Michigan. Ever since I was a kid and we moved away, I would spend the summer at my grandma's house. 
Now I'm fresh out of high school, and my gram had offered to have me come live up there. My grandma is the toughest person I have ever met in my life, and when I say that, I mean it. She's skinny but strong and tall. She drinks beer and smokes like a sailor. She owns many guns and often goes out on her own, hunting. In Michigan, there is a myth of this thing called Dogman. It has the head of a dog and the body of a hairy man, kind of like a werewolf. Its eyes are said to either be blue or amber, and it walks on two feet, standing at a solid seven feet tall. It shows up in ten-year cycles, sometimes with others, sometimes alone. It's native to Michigan and stays there for some reason, and the stories and legends have been around a long time. I think it's following me, and I know I sound crazy. Maybe the fear has hyped me up, but I've always been very open-minded when it comes to these things. It started when my gram asked me if I wanted to go hunting with her. I've always been slightly scared of the woods. They make me very uneasy, but knowing she was there made me feel safe, so I agreed, even though I didn't plan on killing anything because that wasn't my style. So the next week we packed up and headed out to a deer blind that my family often used. It was very deep in the woods and took an hour or so of walking just to get to it. When we did, we settled in and started watching. When you're in a deer blind, you're supposed to be quiet. But I got really bored so I started having small whispered conversations with my gram. I wasn't really looking for deer because I honestly didn't care, but a day out with her seemed nice. She suddenly looked over at me and shushed me, and my heart skipped a little. I had never done this before. But when my grandma pulled down the wooden cover for the entrance and put a hand over my mouth, I just knew something was wrong. Even being 18 years old, I had never ever seen her scared. She is a tough old bastard. So when I saw the troubled expression on her face, I started to panic. My heart was beating so fast, I thought it was going to burst. After what seemed like forever, she finally let go of me, motioned for me to stay quiet, and started packing up. She pulled the cover off, looked around, and we were on our way back. Our pace was way faster than when we walked out there, and I was constantly looking behind my shoulder. I didn't know what we were afraid of, but I knew it was out there, and if she was scared, I sure as hell was. When we got home, I asked her what she saw, and she said that it was a bear which I knew was a lie but I let it go, forcing myself to believe it, thinking I could lure myself into a false sense of security. My gram never lied to me as she was always very straight, so when she did, I knew that she wasn't telling the truth. I failed to mention it earlier, but she owns a beautiful dog named Foster, a mix of wolf and husky. He's the biggest sweetheart ever and never liked to come inside, so he lives in a small stone doghouse outside that night I heard something that sounded like a scream from out in the woods. It was bone chilling and terrifying. I had never heard anything like it in my life. I could hear Foster start to growl. I thought about looking out the window to see what he was growling at, but to hell with that I'm a total scaredy cat. After a while his growling stopped and I finally fell asleep and I shit you not. Just like a horror movie cliche he was gone the next morning. At night we hook his collar onto a wire, which is attached to a clothesline type thing that lets him run around but keeps him in a small radius. And it was fucking snapped, like he wanted to get away from something, or something had gnawed it. And no, there weren't any scary big dogman tracks outside my window. I asked if she wanted to go and see if we could find him, maybe rattle around his treat bag or something, and she quickly shut me down, saying he would be back and not to worry. How could she say that? The wire has never been broken like that before, and she loves him to death. I thought she'd at least want to know if he was alright. But much like the other incidents, I quickly put it in the back of my mind. A few days after that, Foster still hadn't come back, but on some of the trees behind our house, there were huge gouge marks, which I pointed out to her, but she had dismissed it as a very large bear. The next few days were pretty uneventful, except for last night. I'm still shaking as I write this. I was laying down, in hopes of drifting off to sleep, when I heard it. The scream that made me stop and freeze up. Terror coursed through my veins, even making me hold my breath. The scream sounded again, closer, and again, 
where I swear it was in the woods right by our house. I thought of running to my grandmother, but I knew she would just tell me to ignore it. I wanted to look out the window through the blinds, but I was so scared I couldn't even move my legs. That's when the blinds went black. Since there are no cities around us, the light from the stars and moon are pretty bright, and the window stays a faint blue. But the light was being blocked by something. Then I fucking heard it. The guttural breathing that was on the other side of the window. I prayed that whatever it was wouldn't smash the window and eat me up right there. I couldn't move or blink. I knew that it knew I was in here. It scratched one time on the window, like nails on a chalkboard, and let out that scream. It was so loud it felt like it was right next to my ear. And then it ran away. I'm so shaky. I don't want to look and see what I know will be on that window. I'm afraid to sleep, afraid to face tomorrow night. I don't know what to do. I know it's not just a bear. They don't make a noise like that. I swear to God, nothing does. My backyard opens up directly into a cemetery. I'm sure it's easy to imagine how comforting that was to a little boy. In all fairness, it isn't the traditional spooky tombstone covered in cobweb cemetery. It's a nice modern one, with headstones that are level with the ground, and a beautiful pond with resident swans. A year after my family and I moved into this house, I had become desensitized to the fact that my backyard contained hundreds, maybe even thousands of bodies. It got to a point where it didn't even warrant a second thought, until one day when I was about 14. I used to play with my next door neighbor. He was a year younger than me, but we got along just fine. One day we were out just a little past sunset and my neighbor's mom had the cops out looking for him. The moment we got back to his house to eat pizza and watch bad horror movies, his mom rushed outside onto the patio and wrapped both arms around him. It was clear she had been crying. Even in the dark of night, I could see the spots where her tears had rinsed away her heavy makeup. I told you boys to be back before it got dark. I called the police. Don't you know there's been a man standing out in the cemetery, watching the houses around here? She wasn't mad. If anything, she was terrified. Needless to say, I wasn't invited in to eat pizza that night. I got home and went to take a shower. My bathroom is at the back of the house, and has a window with blinds that faces the cemetery. As I was pulling my socks off, the words of my neighbor's mom echoed in my head. I peeked through the blinds. And sure enough, there he was, a pale silhouette against the blue-black night sky. I made my dad call the police. They had apparently already sent a patrol car out, and according to them, an officer had just been through the cemetery, and they hadn't seen anyone. As soon as I heard this, I ran back into the bathroom and peered into the cemetery, and the man was gone. It was smooth sailing for a month or so after that, nothing unusual at all until I was home alone while my parents were on their monthly date night. I was in the basement playing video games when I started hearing noises from upstairs. I paused my game so I could hear the disturbance more clearly. At first I thought it was one of my two dogs jumping around and knocking into things. A minute or so passed in complete silence, and just as I was about to unpause my game, I heard the noise again. I clearly heard the creaking of floorboards and footsteps. I thought that maybe my parents had come back home and I hadn't heard them come in. I called upstairs and what followed made my heart sink. A loud frantic scrambling ensued, like someone having a seizure on the hardwood floors, but it only lasted a few seconds and the house fell back into silence. What does one do in a situation like that? I'll tell you what I did. I called my dogs downstairs wondering why they hadn't been barking moments ago. And then I played video games, keeping an eye on the stairwell, until my parents got home. When they did, I nonchalantly inspected the area where I thought the noises had come from, but found nothing. After that night, things started getting even more uncomfortable, like that the blankets on my bed were always pulled to the foot of the mattress. I made my bed every single morning, so when this would happen, I would just convince myself that I had forgotten to, until it happened while I was in the bed. 
I was on the verge of sleep when I felt the blanket slowly dancing down my body. I sat straight up and fumbled for my light. By the time I turned it on, the blankets were down to my calves. The room was empty. I didn't know what I could say to my parents, so I didn't say anything. I just stayed up for the rest of the night. After that night, I would find my dog staring at the basement door. I wanted nothing to do with that, so I decided that video games weren't really that important. There's a problem when you have to sleep with your door locked and avoid the basement in your own home. I thought maybe I was going crazy. It was date night for my parents again, when I had quite possibly the worst night in my life. I walked in on one of my dogs, staring at the basement door. It has a small doggy door at the bottom, with a clear plastic flap. Must have been for a cat or small dog, from the previous owners. On this particular occasion though, rather than seeing the stairwell behind the door, I saw something terrible. A pale face was staring at me. Two eyes, reflecting the light the way a dog's eyes do. I don't know how long it was that I screamed, but it watched me the whole time. The face slipped back into the dark stairwell, maintaining eye contact. Then I heard it scrambling around in the darkness, and then a door slammed shut. I put my dogs on their leashes and left the house. I felt like an idiot when my parents got home and found my dogs and I sitting out front. I told them what had happened, and my dad grabbed a baseball bat and went inside. I followed, knowing that he didn't believe me. We stomped downstairs and turned the lights on. Nothing was in the main room, so we checked out the storage closet. That was the first time I noticed the crawl space. It had a heavy chain and padlock. It's been years since then, and I still occasionally hear things bumping around downstairs. I still don't have any idea why our crawl space is chained up. I live in constant fear in my own home, and I can't tell anyone. They'll think I'm crazy. Hey guys and ladies, thanks for watching. If you want me to tell your story or read a creepypasta, email me at the address in the description. Tonight on Mystifying Conundrums, meet the man that sewed his own anus shut and exploded, and the woman who couldn't stop laughing. Nice. Man, every time I try to watch Mystifying Conundrums, somebody ruins it. What? Dude, I heard about this dog fighting ring right down the street from you. What? Well, fuck that shit. Yeah, we gotta go shut it down. Well, let's make sure before we call the cops or anything. I'm on the way. Ripley, you be good. I'll be right back. I think it's that one right there. Sounds like it. Let's climb up on that RV and look in that window. All right, stay low. I don't want to get caught trespassing. What's that on their hands? They look like boxing gloves.
Are we still going to call the cops? Yeah. Even though this wasn't what I expected. I mean, they weren't biting and killing each other. I've never seen anything like that before. I actually heard of another house around here that has cockfights. After what we just saw, I think I'm good. Be good to animals, even people. And in all seriousness, if you have been involved in dogfighting or cockfighting, go fuck yourself. Yo, Damn it. I'm trying to watch mystifying conundrums. All right, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, at the cockfight. <clears throat>